Um, I, it's a bit hard to say what this talk is about. It's essentially an attempt to provide some elements of a class analysis and to contrast that analysis with the interpretation of the situation by some of the socialist groups and to see you know, how these differences arise and how a socialist analysis is sometimes useful when app correctly applied and sometimes not so useful. So step one, what's the balance of forces? Uh, and I'm speaking specifically about uh, the 26 county state at the moment. Uh, it would be too complicated. Facts have I tried to do the, with the whole island. Well, the balance of forces is that uh, there's been a steady decline in the traditional bourgeois parties. Both Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have declined to such a point that uh, uh, both of them together could not form uh, a government and they had to uh, pull in the Greens to form the latest government. And what's a certain, the reason that happened is because we've had uh, over a decade of unrelenting austerity where uh, the international banks have been paid uh, Ireland's ruling class have got substantially richer and everybody else has suffered quite substantially. Uh, and there, oh, oh, hanging over it all is a housing crisis that has not been resolved. Uh, and its main function is to see uh, the cost of rent and mortgage rise to unaffordable rates. Okay, so... In the coming election, we will see a further decline in Fianna Fáil. Uh, as the populist party, they have suffered far more uh, from the weaknesses of this government than uh, Fine Gael, who already represented of the most right wing and conservative forces. Um, and it's quite likely, I would think, that Fianna Fáil may split. Uh, in the election, Unless something amazing happens, Sinn Féin will be the leading party and the leading component in the next Dublin government. Now, this will not be a left government because Sinn Féin aren't the left party. Not in any recognisable sense. Uh, it's argued that a coalition with socialist groups uh, would make a left government. So Labour, Social Democrats, the Greens, and the small socialist TDs, uh, and that one with Fianna Fáil would be a right government. I even, even then, the Fianna Fáil version would be good because it would increase popular expectation that issues such as the housing crisis will be resolved. This is argued by a reformist left, who per, their personal situation is they're likely to be wiped out. Of the current crop of left TDs, only one uh, was elected on first preference votes. All the, all the others were totally dependent on Sinn Féin transfers. So uh, they have a big struggle on to present as, themselves as somewhat to the left of Sinn Féin, but not so far to the left that Sinn Féin voters wouldn't give them their transfers. Uh, now, this argument about a coalition that would make a left government uh, has a long-standing history. It was most clearly presented by Mick O'Reilly of Unite, uh, and it was supported by the Communist Party, and the, the SWP, SWN, have long been proponents of this uh, formula, which is essentially a popular front government. It rests, uh, it rests on a sort of cultural phenomena in Ireland itself, where there isn't really a, wor a workers' party. So the way in which people try to uh, maximise their vote is by changing between elections and shuffling the deck so that you get a new coalition. And that rests on the weakness of the working class, decades of political and economic retreat, 
and the absence of a party rep to represent him. So this new coalition idea is wearing thin. Today it involves recycling groups such as the Greens and Labour, even though fairly in the recent past they have led the charge against the workers when they were in coalition government. So part of Sinn Féin's attraction is that they haven't been in a Doyle coalition. So what does Marxist theory say? Well, the first thing it says is there's no left government. A left government is a capitalist government. There are only two forms of government. There's the capitalist government and, and the workers' government. There was some experimentation with, the, with uh, uh, a form of workers and small farmers government around Latin American revolutions. But even then, what was proposed was a workers' government uh, that would seek the support of small farmers. Uh, so, uh, so socialists are, are aiming for a socialist, a workers' government, and after that, a transition to a communist society where the state would wither away. Now, people do talk about a left government, but they mean a capitalist government. Uh, it's left if it proposes reforms that would aid the working class. Socialists support their reforms, but not the government. There aren't really any circumstances in which socialists support a capitalist government. Uh, they can pressure the party and under certain circumstances offer a critical vote for social democratic parties, but the focus is to uh, organize the workers outside the parliament. Uh, and the left go government idea uh, tends to blanket mobilizations because what happens is everybody concentrates on the task of winning parliamentary states seats or holding ones you have. Uh, so what's happened here? Oh, and sorry, before I go on, just to point out that where there have been left governments, they've essentially been social democratic governments uh, in a period in the economic cycle where they have been able to offer reforms to the working class. And we haven't seen anything like that in recent history. Uh, so, so if people swing behind this left government idea, which they have, it's essentially the main, the dominant idea, either Sinn Féin will get in or Sinn Féin will be in a coalition or Sinn Féin will be uh, in with some left groups and it will be more left. And that's, uh, people have sort of, are sort of waiting for that to happen. Uh, and some time away, it's two or three years away. So, uh, so the government, at the, in the recent past, the government adopts a housing policy that throws a three and a half billion at landlords and vulture capitalists, and there's absolutely no prospect of resolving the housing crisis. It scores a victory, and it succeeds in uh, retaining much of Ireland's status as a tax haven. It falls into lane with a modest proposal to increase corporation tax to 15%, but then gets agreement that uh, smaller firms, uh, and not very small firms, but smaller firms operating inside Ireland itself will still pay the 12.5%. In any case, they've, they've never paid. Mostly they don't pay it anyway. So, uh, for example, the, uh, the vulture funds are registered as charities and pay no tax at all. Uh, uh, it adopts a budget. This has all happened in the past couple of weeks that we have five euro giveaways over um, pension, welfare, a Christmas bonus, that sort of thing. But essentially its content is an intensification of, of, of a sturdy uh, end of the future. Uh, it rushes ahead with the privatization of public transport. It holds fast the plans to hand the National Maternity Hospital over to church and private capitalism. So, you know, the obvious need for the working class in these circumstances is to, is to offer some sort of alternative. So what sort of alternative should there be? The workers should offer a universal public housing program. Uh, you know, they've got to break this idea that 
uh, the private sector are going to provide homes for all. Uh, they've got to link rent, rent charges to income, not to the market, which is uh, what the government proposed at the minute. Uh, and would allow people who were on welfare to find themselves paying maybe 70% of their income. Uh, they, they should be offering a nationalization of health and transport, fighting for a living wage, and looking for regula regulation and higher taxation for banks and corporations. And what could you do with this thing? You could organize sections of the working class. You could pressure Sinn Féin and the other parties claiming to be off the left and ask where they stand on all these issues. You could try and force the union bureaucracy from uh, cover. Uh, and in fact, the main reason that there's no protest at all is as soon as the government announced this new housing policy, Act 2 announced they were cancelling the protest. Uh, so um, they managed to collaborate with the government and then just uh, close the gate, draw the curtains, and not be involved in any further discussion. Um, so, a final point. The embrace of left governments by the socialist groups is a result of the, a success, the success of capitalist defensive. Most socialist groups don't see that revolution is on the table. Many of them believe that the workers have suffered an utterly catastrophic defeat. Uh, and so they look for reform, and they look towards broad coalitions and broad parties. That's been going on for about 20 years now. And what we can say is that that, that, that approach has completely failed. Uh, what's the most recent one? Uh, there are most, well, it's hard to name all the way. Podemos has gone down the tubes, um, if, it, if it ever was out of the tubes. Um, the left bloc, Ceresia, um, the green left, the lands in uh, Denmark, um, and uh, uh, a fairly large uh, and new USA movement. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention they link who did terribly in the general election. And uh, a fairly large uh, uh, socialist movement, the DSA, which started off sort of talking about breaking from the Democrats and rallying around Bernie Sanders, and they're now essentially quietly supporting Joe Biden in the hope that they get they get something. Um, now, what can we say? We can say uh, that they're saying that phase is ending. It's ending in two directions. And what the one direction it's ending in is that all these groups are in, in the process of disintegration. But in the other direction, there are actually signs of much greater militancy. Uh, so, so on a, a small scale in Germany, the links vote half, but at the, the same time, uh, workers in uh, Berlin achieved, uh, I think it was an 85% uh, resolution um, to, uh, to nationalize uh, city housing. And uh, uh, that's, you know, that, that's not the workers raising up, but it's self-activity that is, uh, that is uh, going in the right direction, if you like. And the, the uh, same thing you can note in, uh, in America, uh, where they're talking about Striketober, uh, where there's an enormous shortage of, uh, of workers. Uh, workers are unwilling to return after the COVID pandemic to the old, the old rates, and so they're striking, and they're striking in enormous numbers, and they're explaining what their conditions are, which are actually that they've been driven to the to the point of penury uh, by decades of uh, of uh, cost cutting by the major corporations. So, uh, so what I'm saying is. Um, socialists can play a role even when things are tough. And the role they've got to play is to describe the way things are and to propose what the needs of the workers are. 
And even if we're uh, a very small force, that can gradually have an effect. On the other hand, if you uh, go towards opportunism, basically you're just saying me too to whatever the latest frame of the film is and you, you gradually uh, stop having political coherence uh, or, or having any effect.